If you want to show your support and encourage my website and my YouTube channel, you can become a patron. Simply visit Patreon slash Diorama Workshop today. I want to give a huge thank you to my patron, Chris Jones, for sponsoring this video. Hey everyone, welcome to a new tutorial video. Today we're doing the third and final Hoth console. It is the console C. This is the version that you see inside the Hoth Echo Base hangar where you have the snow speeders and the Millennium Falcon. If you look inside the arches, you'll see it placed there in the movie. This was uh, done at Celebration 5 in 2010. However, it was done in a simplified version. I deluxified, I like to use that invented word, the skins and the decals in order to make it more movie accurate and more 2021 improved, if you want to call it that. So you have this in the front, decals all the way around, and it is a very simple build and a lot of fun. So let's get to it. My name is Frank Diorio. You're watching DioramaWorkshop.com. Okay, so here are all the materials you're going to need in order to build your Rebel Console C. The download blueprints, decals, a sheet of foam core. You could use scrap because the items are small enough that you don't need to use a full sheet if you can. Uh, some straws, make sure that they have the bendy accordion at the top there. Uh, some scissors or little fiskers. A hot glue with some hot glue refills an X-Acto knife with X-Acto knife refills, glue stick, some paint, art paint, acrylic. I have some slate gray here and some black, a little paintbrush, and then just a little Tupperware plastic lid in order to mix the paints with. And then some toothpicks with a scrap of foam core to plant the tooth toothpicks in so that you can place your straws as you paint so that you'll also have a stand to let them dry. In order to find your decals and blueprints, go to my website, dioramaworkshop.com, go to tutorials, speed index, scroll down to Empire Strikes Back, and then to over here, Rebel Console C, C5 Deluxe. For decals, you wanna go under the decal column, click on yes, this will bring you to the decal download. You have a preview over here that you could click on and see the different sticker pages over here. And then you want to click on this PDF icon. And this will bring you to the actual PDF sticker sheets. You want to download that to your computer and then print them as is. Don't scale them to fit. Print them 100% in order to go to the blueprints, then return to speed index, console C, blueprints, click on yes, brings you to the console C blueprints, again, the preview, and you wanna click here on the PDF and save this to your desktop. Okay, let's grab our blueprints. And I printed the first two pages on full uh, sticker sheets because these are the decal templates for uh, the main uh, body. And uh, then these are for the lower um, back pieces and the feet, if you wanna call them feet. And then the straws is information. We're not sticking that, it's just for your info. And then the last two pages are just printed on regular sheets of paper because it's just to help you with the dimensions. Now you'll notice how it's divided into three sections. You have the front bodies one and two. And then when you flip this around, you have in the back the 
upper back, the lower back, and then you have two little feet that you have over here to give it uh, a support. Now, this was based on uh, the movie um, design, and so let's get to it. So for page one, we want to have a piece that's large enough to fit all these eight pieces over here. Now I'm going to use my scissors. I'm just going to trim off my bottom that I don't really need to have on the decal. I could have used my exacto, but so I want to make sure that this fits properly like this. It's always tricky finding the where the fold is and then peel. Peel. If you're not using sticker sheets and using the regular sheets, all you need to do is put some glue stick. Never ever put hot glue on the back of a decal. Okay, now I'm going to apply this like that. Always center out, right? You know that by now. Okay, so we have this piece over here. I'm just going to cut this off like that. Now for the feet, I need double thickness of foam core and for the back pieces, I need triple thickness of foam core. Loosely trim along the box. You'll see there's a box shape here. And then do the same thing over here. Cut this little box out. Now you don't have to use a ruler. You don't have to be precise for these. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we can measure our scrap pieces properly. I'll grab a pencil and I'm just going to loosely do a tracing around this square. Now I need three of these. So one, two and three will work over here use my exacto to cut that and this is larger than the actual sticker so it doesn't have to be perfect perfect cuts either and then trim that that's my triple layer so i only need two of these so i'll trace one that off and then cut this and then this in half double there I can now keep this scrap piece for another project okay let's sandwich these two layers together and then we can put the decal so you're going to want to put zigzag of hot glue like that and then place this on top but then wiggle it around because you want to sandwich you want to flatten that glue you don't want to make it you don't want the thickness to be sticking out more than it needs to if you spin it too long the glue will harden and then it won't stick anymore so you have to start over so zigzag press wiggle and then make sure that it's pressed really tight against each other like that. See, so you want a double thickness without too much of a gap from the glue over here. Let's do the same for a triple. Zigzag. Place it on, wiggle, and then press down. Zigzag of glue. Press down, wiggle. You can even put pressure as you wiggle. And that gives us our triple thickness. We can peel our little decal here, template. I just love these full size decal sheets. It makes it so easier to apply your decal skins. Okay, so flat, flat, flat. Then we can apply this over here as well. Oh, here I have a fold, so it should be very simple to peel. Apply our 
sticker like that. Don't worry if these look ugly or if there's text on it. These are our templates to help us cut and not the final skins. What you find in the decal PDF is the exact skins that you will wrap around these four pieces over here. Always start a new project with a fresh blade. So we're going to align your ruler so that you see just a little bit of color exposed because we want to remove all of the white. We don't want any of the white showing on the template. Extend your blade as much as you can. And when you go to cut, you're going to, as we do before, you're going to start here and then lower and then slice because you want the foam core to be cutting with the majority of the blade, not just a small section, okay? And also you want to try to avoid going at an angle like this. You want to try to be 90 degrees with the cutting surface, okay? So start here. You'll have to do multiple pass because your two thicknesses of foam core and the glue that you have to go through. So there's one piece removed. Also, you want to make sure to wait long enough so that the glue has cooled off and hardened because you don't want the glue, hot glue to mess up your blade. It's bad enough that the foam core is the killer of blades. You don't want to replace all your blades just because you have hot glue messing them up. Slice, slice. Oh, I only took two for that one. Slice, slice. Okay, and then down the middle. Align with the dark line. Now we have two identical little feet. Moving on to the bigger block. Remember, this one is three thicknesses, so it'll take a little more cuts to get all the way through. I want to align over here, and just see a little bit of color, and then slice, slice. I just passed the first one. After you do a couple of cuts, you'll start getting the feel. You'll, you'll know when you cut through your pieces or not. And there we go. When you use a new blade, you get really nice cuts. No air bubbles, no tears, just smooth perfection. To have your decals wrap around this is what you want. One, two, oh, this one only took two. One, remember not to angle your blade. Two, and then third. Pass, cuts the bottom. Now over here. One, two, there we go. Okay, now I just have to slice this into two pieces. Place your ruler against the dark line. One, two. You'll see the, when your blade is hitting the glue it makes it a little bit harder you have to put a bit more pressure ah, there we go your two rear pieces triple thickness i'm now going to move on to cutting the single thickness just place your ruler until you see a little bit of the color peeking through and then you slice that off now we can cut these four pieces one two three four now we'll cut our body over here. You see how there's like a white line in between the blacks? You don't want to align along the white. You want to align along the thin black line over here. Just like that. Slice that. And that will leave you a thin white line on the outside. Do you see that? This side here. These two are mirrored, so we want to cut down the center first before you start cutting down on these in half, okay? So I'm going to align in the center over here, which is slightly off the white, like we did on the sides, and you want to trim that. We have these two shapes now. 
One shape is both sides, so we now want to slice down the center. So outside of the black, there's the white line, and in between the two white lines, there's a small, small black line here, and that's what we want to use as our guide to cut. So align that, slice this off. Same thing with this piece over here, align. If you feel that your ruler is going like this because your piece is too small, you can add a scrap piece of foam core against this shape. And so this way your ruler has something to lean on over here as well. So then you can align and not have to worry about a wobbling ruler during your cut. And just do that. So we have now our four pieces. So believe it or not, that's all there is to it. You have your front, your back, these are the sides for the main body, and then you have your two feet and the two lower back and upper back pieces. What you want to do now is take one of your body pieces, we're going to attach it along the black line over here. You'll notice that here there's a little angle cut, so when you're going to be placing your foam core piece against it, you don't want it flat like this. You're going to want to do a little angle cut first. We want to follow the angle like this. So you're going to extend your blade again and you're going to start pressing always with a new blade down as you move it forward. Okay, so you're not just pressing down like this because that would crush your foam core. What you want to do is slide it. Okay, if, it, if you reach the end of your blade before you reach the bottom of your piece, then lift it back up and we'll continue the motion, okay? So, we want to go at an angle. The important thing is that you don't want to cut into this over here. You want to keep your blade going down and not cutting into the outside of your paper shape there. So, are we ready? With practice, you'll understand how this works. So, I'm just going to slice down, slice down, slice down. I now have the correct angle shape that goes over here. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other piece. We wanna put the decal on the inside of your piece, not facing out and I want to slice this way, okay? So I'm going to show you from the other side what the blade looks like. When you're doing angle cuts, you want to place your head right above your shape so that you can see where your blade is going and making sure that it doesn't pass on the other side, the outside of the paper protection. So slide down, slide down. There we go. Just like that. Okay, let's attach our body. So we'll start with our angle piece over here. We'll go along the front. So a little line of hot glue along the side. And then I place this along the black thickness of the template. I want to make sure that it's flush with the side over here as well as at the bottom. You want this to be flush and you want these sides to be flush here as well. When you put the skin, you don't want to have a protrusion there. And you want to try to have this at a 90 degree angle. Let that cool off a little bit. Take one of your other pieces, the one that does not have an angle, okay? And this one we will apply in the same way, but on the other side. A little bit of glue over here. I'm going to align it with the black thickness of the template. And we're just going to press it in place, 90 degrees over here, flush 
as much as you can wiggle it around if you have to it's easier to make it stick out and then push it with your finger there like that okay press down you want to make sure that you're flush on the corners there and at the bottom there like that now we're going to take your b1 right and this one will go over both pieces just like that a little bit of hot glue, a little bit of hot glue, and then flip this around, then a line. So a line flush over here, like that. Keep this pressed down when you're happy with it. And then the same thing with here, I can then press down put some pressure, make sure that it, it all aligns properly. Squeeze that excess glue out. You can just roll over it like this. It'll come off really easily as the glue cools down. I wanna keep some pressure on this for a couple of seconds until the hot glue cools enough that it's not gonna unstick once I let go. It's important that you're Pieces are flush over here to have your skin wrap around. If you see that when you pass your finger, you feel that it's not flush, you could feel the edge, you want to push that a little bit more inside, okay? And then you press down. Now it's smooth all the way across. It's as easy as that. Now we repeat again the same steps for the other side. Get our angle cut. I will be placing that like this over here. A little bit of hot glue. Ow, 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 it fell on my finger. Ooh, you don't want that. Oh my God, that hurt. See, even experienced diorama builders can make simple mistakes like having a piece of glue hot glue fall on your finger okay make sure i'm flush here and flush against the back that's what's important i just realized i have a bruise <laughs> i have no idea how i got that okay i have some glue sticking to the mat here i want to remove that i have a little drop that fell here my finger it's still burning Next year will be the 20th year that we're doing Diorama Builders workshops at the Star Wars US conventions. And we're lucky that in all those two decades, we only had one time that a kid burned themselves with the hot glue. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you want to look at it, it was a Seelofs, Jamie's, uh, I think it was niece or, or cousin or something like that. It was like, she was like really young and she, either dropped glue or touched the glue or something, but it was the loudest screech, high-pitched screech. It was still in my brain and it was like really scary. Everyone turned around and thank God it was fine. We put some polysporin and a Band-Aid and the burn wasn't as severe as the screaming made it sound. But when you're doing hot glue, remember arts and craft is fun, but there are some safety measures you still have to do and precautions of doing the work carefully it still hurts okay i'm gonna grab my other piece over here that has no angles and i'm going to apply some hot glue slide that into place over here like that make sure that it's flush at the top and bottom when you have excess glue like this just let it cool off enough to the touch so that you don't burn yourself. And when you see that it's okay to touch like that, see how it becomes spider webby? That's when you can use your finger and go like this and it'll just roll off and turn into little nose snots. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
And then once it's removed, if it doesn't look perfect, that's okay because it'll be covered with a decal. Okay, I'm gonna put the other end cap on. Do a dry run, make sure that it fits properly. Yep, hot glue, hot glue, apply it over here, align flush at the bottom with the corners, put some pressure, and then over here, I'm going to lift it a little bit and then press it down till it's flush over here and then put more strong pressure here like that and this is nice press it down a little more okay and then some strong pressure once your two boxes are done believe it or not we have all the pieces we need in order to start applying our decals so you have page one and two is the front wrap and the rear of the main bodies and then page three and four of your decal sheets are your lower and upper rear boxes so let's cut that out using the cutting guide over here what's in red is what we want to cut so we're going to cut inside and then the rest is all folding lines so we don't want to cut that let's just trim this excess off for a little while Make it easier, just trim that around, go around the foot like this. You can always use scissors also to cut around and to cut the actual decal actually. So let's just do this. So if you want, you can use scissors and just, you want to remove the white. So you just go along the lines like this or just use your ruler when it's straight lines it actually goes faster so slice that off then for this start it at the corner same thing for here corner and then here i'll go but i'll stop before i get to the corner and i'll use a scissor for that and here we want to cut all the way across on both sides so I can continue until I get to the first intersection over here. And then I'll do the same thing here. Okay. However, the rest we go on the outside where the white is. All the way across, all the way across over here to the corner. Okay, we got one down. Now we're going to do the other. Into the corner. This is the outside to the corner. chad stuck here there we go and one last cut okay the two decals are done i'll trim these first as well cut that in two and then my little foot over here same thing there for these pieces, it's the same thing. The pale blue lines are folding guides. You'll see on one of the decal pages, the same red cutting guides. That's where you want to cut. You can do it freehand if you feel comfortable. If not, then use your ruler. Again, you're going to align over here. We don't want any of the white sticking through. So put your ruler just until you start seeing the edge over there. And then you're going to cut that off like that. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this first. Trim that off that we don't need. Do the bottom. 
the side. Now we have to cut the in-betweens. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with your X-Acto doing that, you can use a pair of scissors, okay? And if you don't feel comfortable with big scissors like this, my cousin bought me these little Fiskars, which is kind of cool because if you release the spring, when you press down, see how they reopen automatically because of this little spring there? So these are really good for cutting tight corners. If you want, you could just use a little pair of scissors like this and then just trim off the excess like that along the outside over here and then over here do the same thing along here so for this line you want to cut all the way through and stop at this line over here where the connection is over here we just cut regular around Here we had slight angle and here we want to do a straight line. So we're just going to trim off this little tiny, tiny piece. Just like that. Do you see? So you get a slight little triangle shape in there. We want to do the same on this side. Just that small little piece over here. Now it's time to cut this little red piece over here. So cut and do the same thing on this end cut now let's do the same on the other piece if you're wondering why your page 2 left body doesn't uh, have this little white line here is that I just noticed this when I was doing the work so this it was a gaff in my original decal so when you're going to be downloading it and building your final product, this little white line will not be there. You're going to have a full color like you have over here. Now let's cut this just as we did the other one. If you feel comfortable, you can cut without the ruler or continue with the ruler. You can even cut these with the exacto if you want. Now we just want to cut along over here for the fold, for the fold over here. These body backs are simple enough. Okay, one. Remember, just expose a little bit of color. We don't want to have any white showing on the sides of our decals. And there we have two. Put these aside. Okay, we want to do folds. When we're folding the long lengths, we want to put our two middle fingers and then use our index fingers to fold over. Okay, you want to start by just rounding. Okay, you don't want to like do a straight bend right away because it might go at a bad angle and you'll get a crease. So you want to make sure that you're slowly putting more and more pressure as we go along. And then when you see that it's starting to follow the line pretty well, then you can start pinching. Pinch, 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 and then pinch all the way across. Okay, same thing over here. Just follow the pale blue line. Okay, now this folds this way and that's why we did the cut and stopped at this folding line so fold here fold there okay now we can fold this over here when the paper is shorter it folds easier and then fold like that okay another long fold over here 
I changed paper for this print and it's actually folding a lot better than the old one. I think that uh, Avery changed their wax or the backing because compared to before, when you look at this one, it was not only a little bit more pale than the color of the say it's the same decal and it's supposed to be the same color but because the paper stock is different it came out a little darker but the fold I was having more trouble folding and see how these papers just start peeling off I'm not getting that with this new paper that I'm using there I kind of like this one okay Fold this, fold that, and one over here, and one last one. Okay, we have all our folds on this box. So we're going to just fold this one over here. Same thing. Start curving and slightly pinch all along, pinch more and more until it starts following the line and then do that. Wow, this paper is really, I'm surprised. <laughs> it's going so well, I'll have to add it in the material list, the brand for this. I'll see if it glues and sticks better to the foam core as well when we apply it. Okay, one long fold over here. Oh, now it's giving me a bit more trouble. I spoke too soon. Okay. Oh, one of the kittens is uh, downstairs. I bet you she's going to jump on the table any minute now. That's done. Now I have this to fold. This one here. This over there. I like working with decals. It's a lot of fun. Of course, everyone, the whole trend is 3D printing now, and you can do like more amazing movie accurate or you know if you perf perfection if you want to call it that with the 3d printing though i still don't like the layer effect that it gives but there's just something doing it with your hands and foam core and stickers it's just more fun okay this is folded also so let's put that aside next let's do these so i'm going to start with the main body again fingers extended like this so that you can easily fold and then I'm putting I'm making my finger stop in the center so that I don't get a crease over here I just want to sort of like make this a rough shape first or a rough bend I should say okay now I can pinch harder and then pinch all the way across. Now I want to do the same thing. See my, my decal starting to peel off because of the folding. So I want to be careful about that. I don't want to expose the glue yet. Of course, if you print it on regular paper, you won't have that problem. Okay. And I'm going to fold, fold. Okay. This little piece folds this way okay this one folds here at the top and then this one folds both and now I go and fold this here this one's done already okay now I refold this main one they're tricky, these long ones. You have to take your time. The 
trick is not to bend it right away. I know we want to have tendency to do that, but if you fold it and pinch too quickly and it doesn't follow the line, you're going to have a crease in your decal skin and it won't fit properly around the foam core. Now for here. Okay, now, your version won't have this white thing, so don't worry if you're not seeing this, okay? But you're just folding this over. See, it'll be wrapped anyway, but I could have left it like this, but I wanted to fix it so that you don't have confusion. But you'll have confusion now because you're wondering, why does my piece don't, doesn't have a white thing like that? Okay, fold over here. Fold over the bottom. And then this final little overlap lip there. We have all the folds done over here for this one. Okay. Let's do the other main body in the same way. Okay, these folds are done. This has no folds. They're the back of these pieces. And then here I have a little fold here, a little fold there, and then a fold over here. You could see now why we trimmed into our piece over here so that it would allow this to fold over. And now we're able to fold this this way and then we'll be able to fold that like that. I want to fold that, this over here and here. Okay, these are the little feet that's one and then I just need to fold this last piece over here oh, wants to give me trouble this little one okay and one last one and then We are ready. Now all our pieces are all cut. The skins are folded and ready to be applied. The only preparation that we have left is for our straws. In the back over here, there are some straws that are connected to look like uh, some piping or metal ducts that are in the movie. In my prototype from 2010 for celebration, I had found these black straws and gray straws that have the bendies over them, but I can't find these in stores anymore. So I'm going to be using these purplish straws. The important thing in your straws is to have this little bend thing that will allow you to do little 90 degree corners like this. Let's go to our blueprint over here. We have to measure the straws. That's the only item that's not in foam core. What we want to do is we we're going to extend our straw over here and I'm going to pre-bend it and I want three centimeters from the start of the accordion here. So I'm just going to place it like this. If you printed this full scale with no resizing, you should be able to have the exact measurements. So I'm just going to take the scissor like this at the three centimeters and I'm just going to cut that like that and I'm just going to trim the excess there and then I'm going to realign it and I'm going to cut it over here just trim that these fiskers work really well for tiny tiny cuts like that 
So I have my straw one over here like that. Now I want to cut two centimeter pieces two times. I can use what was left over from the first straw. Two centimeters like this. Then I can bend it and then align the scissors to it and cut it like that and then just trim off this little excess. I have two little pieces of two centimeters over here. I'm going to extend it and then curve it to give it a 90 degree corner. Now I want 0.5 centimeter over here. So I'm just going to trim that like that over here and then 5.5 centimeter length. So I'm just going to cut it there. We need to do another curve over here. So that's why you need another straw because the curves are only on one side, right? So for that, what we want to do is we are going to keep the same 0.5 centimeter over here, which is going to be our connection with the actual base. And what we want to do is have one centimeter over at the top, because that's what we're going to pinch and insert into the sleeve over here in order to make a connection. You're going to want to pinch this over here into itself to make a V shape. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. So you're going to push down here at the top and then you're going to pinch it just like that. Okay, so now it's pinched here. Do you see the V? Let's see, I'll try to put it against my shirt because it's pink transparent, it's not easy. Now we should be able to insert the pinched end into the other straw. And then you wanna just adjust this so that you get the U shape, okay? And there we have our one, two, three, and four pieces of straws. Now we can paint them. So I'm just going to use some black and gray paint over here that I have the little art acrylic artistic paints there. They're a dollar 40 or $2 in the dollar store. And I'm going to shake, put a little bit on my little Tupperware container like that. The same thing with the gray. Doesn't really matter the exact color. I'm going to take a toothpick. And I'm actually going to put the straw over the toothpick like this in order to place it on a scrap piece of foam core like this. Oops, <laughs> it's like a spring. Just a little bit of gray paint. Paint over the straw. Now paint on plastic tends to not want to marry itself and, and it tends to rub off. So you have to do multiple coats. Okay. And then I almost dabbed it in the, in the black. Now the cool part about this too, is that the paint is going to help you see even more the folds, the accordion folds from the straw. So you don't want to put a big thick glob. You just want to put just enough to hide the color of the plastic. Okay. And to make it look more like a metal pipe. You could use silver if you prefer than using gray, or you can just put it all black if you want. But I decided to do it in two colors. It just makes it a little more interesting. Just like that. Now, if you find gray straws that have the little accordion fold, then you don't even have to do this. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. These are supposed to be black. So I'm going to go into the black paint now. Okay, I'm just going to go like this, but you should change either use a different paintbrush or wash your paintbrush and then use the black paint after. Okay, or if you have a black straw, they're even better. But again, I can't find them anymore. Okay, so that's one. Here's two. You'll have to put more than one coat, so don't put too much and make it all globby. Okay, so that works for that. 
There's the glue on my nail again. It makes it look like my nail is falling off or something. <laughs> so black on this one, around the accordion. I like painting. Painting is fun. Reminds me of my childhood with my mom. She taught me the fun of, we used to do paint by numbers. My mom was very artistic too. I guess I got the artistic bug from her side of the family. And then this part of the accordion. Okay, I'm gonna get my hands messy here. I'm gonna try and I'm letting it lean against the corner there. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse my paintbrush and wash my hands. Let's put some stickers. Let's start with the feet. The feet are the easiest. We have these little pieces over here. I'm gonna apply a bit of glue stick on one of the top edges there. Now I'm gonna peel this. I have to find where the fold is. It's always tricky sometimes in these. If not, and there we go. Okay, so I have to carefully peel it. And now I'm going to apply this right in the center over here, just like that. Now, in theory, it should all align perfectly. I have this here, okay? And so what I'm gonna do now is that you wanna fold these to the side around first because these little overlaps at the top and bottom are going to connect onto your foam core and then this top and bottom are gonna fold over and then you'll want to have it go over here so that you don't see any of the black in between. Fold this all the way to the end and it does meet up to the end, which is good. I'm gonna press this down. Now I'm gonna fold this over, okay? When you fold it over, you don't wanna have a bubble here. You wanna have that, keep that flat. Make sure that it's wrapped tight here around the edges. That's where you can rub more, accentuate those folds that you made, okay? So I'm just folding this over here, pressing this down flat here, and then fold over, have the sticker connect over there. Same thing here, see it's nice and flat. Nice and flat here. Now I have this applied like that. I can now fold this over and it'll give me a nice front edge over here. And because we put these little side flaps there, when we fold over, we're not going to see any exposed black over here. So let's do that like this. And then do that over here. So now rub at the top, at the bottom, all the way around. And you see, you have nice connections all the way around. Let's do the same thing for the other. Little glue stick and peel this off. <laughs> I can't believe I took the wax paper that I just peeled off from the first sticker, and then I'm, I thought this was the second decal, and I'm trying to peel off. Oh my God. You'd think that I'm filming this at the, like two in the morning that I usually film, but it's like only like four in the afternoon. <laughs> Here's the piece I'm looking for. Let's peel this off. Oh my God, I can't believe I, I actually did that. <laughs> I'll put a bit more glue stick here and then I'll be able to see it allows me to slide this back and forth to make sure that it's perfectly aligned because this first connection is the important one. Okay. Now we're going to fold this over. Fold the flap. 
make sure this is flat, fold it over here, then fold this flap like that. I want this, this flap over and this flap while keeping this flat over here. Flap and flat. It's like a tongue twister. Okay, now I can fold that. Now fold that over. And fold this. My fat fingers are hiding what I'm supposed to trying to show you, but I think you got the picture. Okay, now I'm going to fold this over like that. Now, normally when we do uh, did the Death Star walls, I would do a black Sharpie to hide the thickness of the paper. But now because we're doing light color, light bluish gray, the white thickness of the paper doesn't really show at the seams like it does. And if we would put the black, it would show more. So we just want to leave it as is. So there we go for our second box. Now we're going to move on to the upper back or lower back. It doesn't really matter since they're identical. And once the skin is on, you're not going to see with the identification anyhow. So what we want to do is take your glue stick. Never use hot glue when you're using decals. So I only want to apply it over here so that I'll be able to slide it around if it's not placed perfectly at the start. I want to peel my first decal. Make sure not to tear it. With all the folds there, it's going to want to get caught on the pieces there. Carefully. You would not want it to tear at this point and have to do all this over again. We want to put contact on this area first, okay? Align it and then lower it. It's a little off. Looks not bad at all. So once you see that it's pretty much lined up with your folds, then you can start pressing at the center and then center out. Center out, center out to the corners, center out. Now we're going to start with this, fold this. You can pull it if you want. Again, center towards the outside. Same thing here, center. Make sure the wrap is nice. Okay, we're going to fold this over like that. Same thing on this end, fold that over. Okay, now we're going to fold this piece center, center, center out, center out. Now we're going to fold this piece over here, fold, you want to fold this over, this piece over here. Before putting this top lid, we want to now bend the side, okay, and then fold that over like so. There's no creases over here. Fold here. Press against the side. And then fold again. Okay. Now we're ready to bring our back. So we're going to pull here as we lower. Center, center out, center out, this way, center, make this flat, nice 
corner there, center out. We should now have a nice fully covered little box. Now we're going to do the top. Same thing. It says lower, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, you can't even notice anymore once it's done. So apply a generous amount of glue stick. Peel this. Oh, I peeled it really fast. I almost tore the sticker. I was telling you to be careful earlier, I'm not listening to my own advice. We want to align it with this rectangle there. So I look at the folds that I created earlier and I'm just going to place this in the corner. It should fit pretty well. If not, you can always lift it. Yeah, I think that works better. Center, out. I want to make sure there's no air bubbles. Center out. Almost looks like bad robot, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, now start over here. Pull. I get a nice bend. Okay, start at the center. Work your way out. Now we want to fold this first and on the other side. Now we're going to pull over here and turn. Make sure that it's flat on the side and apply like that. Good. Go to the opposite end. Give it that tighter curve. Nice. Okay, center out. Fold over here. Along here. Fold this like that. We're going to fold this first. Oh, I feel the new kitty is at my feet there. She just discovered this room when we were keeping her from the basement for a little while until the quarantine her two week from getting a spade. She's quite feisty. Hey, Roxy. Okay, so here I'm gonna fold this over, flatten this. Are you going in the garbage, Roxy? What are you doing down there? I can always touch that up with a bit of blue marker or something or paint. Box number two and box number one. Get out of there. You're inside the garbage. Get out of the garbage. Here she is. Roxy, look at the camera. Look at that face. Look over there. Oh. She's three months now, eh? Yes. Oh, she's such a cutie. We called her Roxy because she rolls onto her back because she likes to have her tummy petted. So she's a roller, a Roxy roller. She's not looking at the camera though. <laughs> Roxy, look over there. Oh, look how cute. Now that's out of the way. <laughs> okay, let's put the skins on the top parts or the front parts. We have the main skins here and then the rear piece over here. If you're wondering why yours doesn't have that, that's because I fixed it since doing the video. This is the front of it. The 90 degree angle is the rear. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the decal on the angled side. Apply glue stick all on here. Then we're going to peel the decal. And we're going to do like we did 
with the other box and we're going to align this with our folds as close as we can to start. The sides seem not bad. Pressing in the center, center out, center towards the corners like this until you start reaching the top there. Same thing here, center down. First is we want to do the top. So we want to go and lower this like that. Okay, and then press it down. Flip this to the side. And then this to the side like that. And then we can lower the rear of the decal like that. Okay. Now we want to fold the bottom. So the bottom has no hole. So be careful not to push your fingers so hard that you're going to make a hole. What you want to do is stretch it and pull it like that so that the outer edge touches and makes contact over here. Okay. So you're just going to pull it tight and then you'll see that it's touching on the sides and touching on the rear and on the side over here as well. Okay. You can fold this over first if you want. It doesn't really matter. This are the sides there. Fold that. Then you fold this. And then fold this over here. Now we can do the side. Like this, just pull it. Center out. Center out. Like this. Same thing over here, pull it tight a little bit and then make sure this is flat and then center out, center out. It's looking really nice. I really like the job I did on this decal. So this is the front and then we have our sides underneath, top. So now we just need to cover the back. To make sure you're putting the right decal on the rear, look at the grids. This is in the left corner. This is in the upper right corner. So it's opposite ends. Also, you'll see that there's these discolorations, these lighter tones over here in the blue. That's because this is where you're going to be gluing your boxes that you made. You're going to be aligning them over here. Okay. That's your placement guide. I'm going to put some glue stick over here outwards in because I don't want to rip and pull my sticker off that I just placed. So out in, out in. Oh, here comes Roxy again. Let's see if she's ready for her close up. I just need to attach this before the glue settles in. So start the alignment at the top here. Make sure it's aligned. Just softly press it down and it does. It's fitting nicely. So once it's lightly pressed, start in the center, putting more pressure. Center out. Center out. Center out. Use your nail technique to make sure that it's blended properly. And we have a perfect front piece, left side. Same thing for the right front. We want to do the 90 degree angle here is our back. This is the front, meaning that our decal will be placed this way. So I want to apply glue stick on the front here. Now peel the sticker. Be careful. Again, you don't want to rip it. Oh, this tiny little corner here and a piece of wax. Align with the top fold and then 
lower it. That looks pretty good. Yeah, rub the center, then center out, center out, just like that. The more videos you start watching of the channel, you're going to start noticing techniques that repeat in many diorama builds. Center out, nail technique, black sharpie pen. Okay, so top first, let's bend this over like so. Make sure this is flat, then bend that over like that. Fold this over and fold this over like that. If there's a little excess, you just fold it in case your foam core, you didn't cut it 100% to the template shape, that's fine. Now we're gonna do the bottom. Again, don't poke into the hole. Stretch until you reach the outer edge here. Stretch outwards, center out. Then here you can press down on the edges because of the thickness of the foam core. Bend over or fold over this corner over here and this one over here. Now we can do the side of the console. Center out. See, I just noticed I was started here. And if I had started at the center, I could have manipulated it a little bit, but now it's kind of stuck. So center like this, and then center out, pull it tight. That's good. It's fitting really nicely, I have to say. So wrap it around, center, 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 center. Just like that. Center out. Okay. Make sure there's full contact over here. Fold it around. Fold. Fold. What are you doing down there, Roxy? I'm going to have to start closing the doors when I film my videos. Oh, she's playing with foam core. She's a future diorama builder, this cat. Okay, there's our piece. We just have to do the back. I'm going to apply some glue stick outside in, outside in over there. Peel my decal. Is there a folding line? I don't see any, so I'll try to Oh, there it is. I couldn't find it. Sometimes they're tricky to find. Okay, now I said this is the top. Top, top. So this goes over here. So align it in the corner. Put your finger on it. That way I can rotate it like that in order to align it with the side by pulling it at the same time. Once I'm happy with that, Start lowering it slightly. Then you see that it fits nice. Put more pressure. Firm pressure in the center. Out. Center out. Center out. Beautiful. A little nail technique. This is your second side of the front. See how the two different lighter colors align themselves over here? You'll notice that if I place my one of my rear rectangle boxes, it sticks out past the color. And that's because we want a gap here. And so for you to get the exact perfect gap. That's why I put these 
discolorations so that you can align put a bit of glue we're going to put a bit of glue you're going to align this here with the side and then you're going to be able to adjust this until you align it on that side and it'll give you the exact gap that we want so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start on the right side over here okay and i'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the pale color just a little circle like that you just need enough for it to connect and then i'm going to align this with the bottom and on the side over here and then i'm just going to press slightly until the glue cools down i'm going to move to this side i'm going to apply a little bit of glue over here then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to place this inside the blue i'm going to align it over here and on the sides okay if you want to make sure that it's a hundred percent perfect you can lay it like this on your table surface to make sure that the bottom is flat over here okay because you want this to be level you don't want it to be one higher and one lower okay that's why by following the color guides you should be okay let that cool down a little bit now before we apply this piece over here we have straws that go in between in order to give the illusion that there's cable wires and stuff while editing the video i noticed that for some reason the section explaining how to insert the center straws wasn't filmed or the camera was off or something i'm not quite sure so i'm going to show you that step now so ignore this because this technically has not happened yet okay so we're just going to concentrate on how to connect your little two centimeter straw here to the in-between part of the bottom and lower back sections okay so what you're going to do is you're going to take a toothpick and you're going to find your hole guides okay these two that you see here are not in the final version of the decal so you won't be seeing these holes here so what you're going to do is you're going to take your toothpick and you're just going to poke it inside over here just like that okay and you're going to do the same thing over here just insert your toothpick a little less than halfway and what you're going to do is that now it's going to allow you to be able to place your straws on top like this and that will be your measurement for where to connect your second rear piece over there now that part was filmed so i'm going to jump into that right away so what you're going to do now is you're going to align your toothpicks with your holes over here you're going to pull this out slightly so that you can press in like that then the same thing on the other side lift and press can you see how you've entered the holes there so now you can press this in until the straws connect like that and then that'll give you your perfect distance now because you're using straws you don't really need to glue this to here you can push this down and put a little drop of glue if you wanted but it's pretty solid enough like this that you don't really need it what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the feet to the base over here this little emboss look at the dark goes to the bottom not like this but like that and since the emboss is at the bottom this is on the outside which means that this would be on the left foot like that and the other one on the right so what we're going to do i'm going to apply a small amount of glue place it right on the corner 
I want it flush with the bottom because that's going to be my toe. And I want it flush on the side here. Now we're going to do the same thing here. A little bit of glue. Align it in the corner. Flush at the bottom. Flush on the side. Just like that. Let this dry. Almost looks like a gonk droid of sorts, doesn't it? This is what it looks like so far. Okay. Now all we need to do is add the straws that go on the top part over here. Now you'll see that on this part, it was correct to have the four toothpick references. You have two in the center here and then two on the outside. Now the outside will represent your black U shape because it's like a continuation as if these straws went inside this shape and then came out like a pipe. And then your little V will go in the center here. The U piece goes behind the V. So we want to apply that one first. Since this is only 0.5 centimeters, the toothpicks are a little too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these in half and then I'm going to poke down one side and then poke down this side. Okay, I want to leave just enough for this to be able to slip over like that. But this will wiggle around because there's no real support. Okay, so what I want to do is put a little bit of glue. The hot glue will make the straw melt. Okay, so you want to put just one little drop like that. Small drop, not too much. Okay, just enough so that it'll make some contact and keep the straw in place. Then slowly guide the straw on top and press it down against your shape there. Now see how it looks like the pipe goes around like this? Okay, just like in the movie. We want to do the front V part now. Now this is a bit longer, so the toothpick, you don't have to cut it. You can just place it like this, right? So I'm going to take one toothpick and place it at a slight angle, not completely like that, but you'll be able to play around with it with the V. So at a slight angle, push it in like that. Then your next toothpick goes in like that. A little bit of glue, very minimal. And then slide one end and then the other end in and then press it down until you make contact. Now this part is optional, but it's the last sticker to place if you want to. If this seam over here from your foot and the back piece, okay, on both sides, if this bugs you, you can take the last decal that we have and place it on top and then that will make it look like it's one piece and hide the seam. We just need to put a little bit of glue stick on the sides. The thicker part goes up and down and the thinner part is what is on the foot. Then I just want to peel this like this. And then center it and apply like this. You can use your nail technique just to give it a better contact. And see the difference? This is with the decal, no seam. And without the decal, you could see the connection. So let's attach this one too. Just a little bit of glue stick, peel, find your corner. And then with the glue stick, it'll allow you to wiggle the decal to make it fit perfectly. Curve around with your fingernail technique. 
remove any of the excess glue there. And there you go. Perfection. And that's it. Your console is done. You have the back with the straws and the sides and the front. And this is actually seen in the Hoth Echo Base main hanger with the snow speeders and the Millennium Falcon. If you look inside some of the alcoves, you'll be able to see this console. So now what we have to do is place it in a hallway or a Hoth diorama and we're done. And then you go, then you go, there you go. <laughs> And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe if you haven't already. It will help grow the channel and help spread the word of the fun of making dioramas. I'll be posting the links at the end of the credits for the console A and B tutorials that you'll be able to do, as well as the C that you just watched. And that'll be the completion of your Hoth Echo Base Rebel Console Trio. My name's Frank Diorio. Diorama Workshop. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching DioramaWorkshop.com. If you want more interactivity, you can follow us on these multimedia platforms. If you have a question about past or future Star Wars Celebration workshops, send me an email at DioramaWorkshop.com at gmail.com. If you have a Facebook account, join the official Star Wars Celebration Diorama Builders fan club today. If you like the video, please subscribe, share, and tell your friends to come check us out. If you want to see even more Star Wars Celebration crew coverage, click on the link to warp to DioramaWorkshop.com, the official Star Wars Celebration Diorama Builders website.